Good morning, folks. We are now five days without the HD Helio Viewer images, five days without the Earth scale, but no matter, because the Earth-facing side of our star has been calm. That goes for the north and the south, which carries the prominent coronal holes. One filament did snap on the Earth side, but it was departing south of the already southern coronal hole, and it will not affect Earth. The calm is surprising because of the sunspots. There has been an explosion in sunspot number as multiple active regions have entered the disk. We'll look at them one by one here. The leading group is biggest, but also spread out, and the umbras are not interacting. It's gamma class. Behind to the north is beta only. Everything is crammed together, but the convergence shows tiny umbras or surface magnetism only. South of that, we see a strong negative lead umbra split by a light bridge with non-interactive features trailing behind it. Also got a good sized sunspot cresting on the south now as well. The calm can't last forever, but we've got no delta spots now. We've got seven days of solar wind here. Looking at the leading density shockwave to the current coronal hole stream, which has doubled the speed of the particles and took plasma temperature from 1,000 Kelvin to over 100,000 Kelvin. There have been significant magnetic pulsations and UHF waves in our system, and we're unstable as a magnetic storm has ruled over our protective layers for two days now. We peaked out at level 2, KP6 last night. We got coronal holes departing bottom right and another entering the earth facing fourth yesterday morning. Watch how those two areas gain orange and red as I jump from two days ago to yesterday's power here on Iswa. That extra force delivered the first six magnitude earthquake in a couple of weeks, delivering to Greece, also took one above average in the Caribbean. And Uvinas in Peru developed even more activity. A series of moves has created a river of rock a mammoth mudslide. This follows the ash eruptions which have caused evacuations and dusted nearby villages. More volcanoes active in the last month than at any point since 2011. Ceres, we're back here. Dawn isn't supposed to give us images for a few more days actually, but it caught a glimmer of the sun hitting part of the sphere as it went behind the dark side. It is linked for you below. Also this from Elon Musk. The latest attempt to capture the first stage rocket looked incredible, but Elon did not post the whole video. Despite the seemingly soft touchdown, there's actually that extra little tilt back left at the last moment. After the feed cuts, we are told that the rocket fell over and broke, according to the SpaceX press materials. Three nuclear stories on RSOE. Iridium-192 stolen in Mexico. Authorities are on the lookout for the culprits. Then, after waiting six months to report the incident, we now know that there was a worker exposure that occurred during waste repackaging at Idaho National Lab. In eastern Canada, we also had 7,000 liters of heavy water leak from a transfer station. They claim all spilled material was recovered. Also got linked for you a good article about years worth of rain falling in one day in the Atacama Desert. Let's go and check in on the polar ice. Up north, a major cold event has added to the total, bringing us from near record low ice a week ago to well above those marks now. Meanwhile, the Antarctic is still struggling to break last year's record high ice marks, but no other year matches the totals we are seeing now. Got the precipitable water overlay showing on the wind map so you see the moisture and heat flow out of the south. That will drive tonight's big alerts in the United States, flash flood potential and severe storm alerts, including tornado warnings and severe snow events to the northwest as well. This is nearly the same area as we identified yesterday and the weather channel has a number of hail and tornadoes caught on video. Top alerts in Europe tonight are coming with these southern lows churning as they slowly dance eastward here. But let's also notice that west of those lows and west of the land mass, we see a monster out in the ocean. We're going to have to keep our eyes on that one. Down under, we've got a low creating one convergence line south of all the land here, but another one drawing its line across New Zealand and Australia. So that will make for two long, thin convergence lines in this zone, with only one relevant for the people. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Tomorrow, the Mobile Observatory project kicks back up. Denver, San Francisco, Sacramento, and Salt Lake City. Eyes open. 
No Fear at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.